Of all the types of racing games that are out there, one of my favorites is when we drift around household items and tiny cars. I've loved the tabletop style racer ever since I first played Micro Machines, and every year I hope that some developer will do this awesome subgenre justice. Well, you can cross 2021 off the list because this year's model is a thoroughly disappointing game called Mini Madness that comes to us from a first time developer named D6 Team. It's a stark reminder that even if you have a great concept and get a lot of the elements right, you might as well not even start the race if the gameplay is bad. Yeah, buckle up folks, because this is going to be a bumpy ride. The promise of a tabletop racing game is that you can speed through courses made up of everyday household items. You'll have to dodge cereal boxes in the kitchen, swerve around game controls in the living room, avoid wooden blocks in the kids' room, and who knows, maybe even drive up rare paintings in the attic. The courses and obstacles are relatable because they're all the kinds of things that we see on a daily basis, freeing up the developer to be as over-the-top and wild as they want to be. I mean, we're racing on dirty rugs and smashing the opponents into toaster ovens, so there's no expectation of realism. That's something that Mini Madness actually gets right. This is a game that knows that half the fun of a racer like this is taking the full tour of the house and seeing how they use everyday objects to construct each course. We get two of these unique tracks in each of the different rooms and areas of the house giving us a nice variety of locations to race through and familiar objects to avoid along the way. The way this game is structured has us taken on both of the tracks back to back in a normal race to the finish. This is followed by having us play the two courses again, this time with the ability to pick up a bunch of different weapons such as homing missiles, land mines, and even a shotgun. Once you've come in first in both the standard and weapon based races, we move on to the kitchen, the attic, the corridor stairs, and a number of other locations. We continue bouncing between these two race types until we've either seen the entire house or given up due to the awful gameplay. Look, we're gonna get to why Mini Madness is so damn disappointing in a moment. But first I want to talk about one of the things that sets this game apart from all of the other tabletop racers on the market. On top of buying new cars and paint jobs, you'll also have the opportunity to buy engine upgrades that'll make you recover faster or speed up the time it takes to refill the turbo meter. These upgrades can also go in an unusual direction, such as a gravity boost that'll let you drive straight up a wall on certain parts of the track. What's cool about these engine upgrades is that you'll be able to continue to stack them on top of each other as you progress through the tournament. Unfortunately, even with a fully upgraded car, the racing in Mini Madness just isn't very good. The problem is obvious from the first race. The gameplay is floaty because the cars have no weight to them. Your vehicle will bounce around the level as if it's made out of paper, constantly rolling over and flying through the air in uncontrollable ways. And folks, it's, it's not even as if I'm looking for perfect physics or realism here. But it gets so bad that there were times when I wondered if any of this is even happening on Earth. The floatiness is only made worse by the terrible course designs. While it's true that D6 team got the look and locations right, that doesn't seem to extend to the track layout. For what is supposed to be a fast-paced racing game, Mini Madness goes out of its way to punish players for going too fast. These stages are filled with jumps, turns, and switch-ups that seem like they're specifically designed to get you stuck in the environment. I mean, there's a course where you jump straight into a foosball table with predictable results. It gets to the point where you'll have to play each of the stages multiple times just to memorize all the obstacles, which is only made worse when you have missiles and bullets flying at you in the weapon rounds. But even when you're not getting stuck in a bunch of household items, the game still finds a way to make the driving less fun. Most of the levels are designed with long, boring stretches that are high up in the air. Normally, this wouldn't be a problem. 
But because this is the kind of racing game where just about anything will send you flipping uncontrollably through the air, I was always a little anxious when I was that high above the ground. One wrong turn will send you flying off course and make catching back up practically impossible. That's frustrating. The maddening thing about Mini Madness is that so many of the elements are here for a great tabletop racing game. With better handling, less floaty gameplay, and a few tweaks to the level designs, you would have a genuinely fun racer that perfectly captures the fun of driving tiny cars through a cluttered house. It's a killer idea that's just waiting to be done right. Unfortunately, Mini Madness crashes and burns somewhere between the cereal boxes and the toaster oven. A great gimmick is not enough to get this tabletop-style racing game over the finish line. From the kitchen, to the bedroom, to the upstairs attic, Mini Madness takes you on the full tour of the house, all while having you swerve around a whole lot of fun, everyday objects. But while it looks the part and has a unique upgrade system, the small-scale racing game stalls out due to the floaty gameplay, terrible level designs, and unrealistic physics. Those are not tiny problems, leaving me to conclude that Mini Madness is a major disappointment. Hey, thanks for watching our review. If you liked what you saw here, then you should know that we post new reviews and features almost every day. Now, here's the question I have for you. What racing game disappointed you the most? For me, it has to be Auto Modelista, which definitely had the look and style, but just couldn't get the gameplay right. I've also been let down by some of those kart racing sequels. You know the ones. Oh boy, there are a lot of disappointing racing games to choose from, so I can't wait to see your thoughts in the comments below. In other news, I'm currently working on an article that's 13 years in the making. That's not even an exaggeration. I hope it lives up to the hype. While you wait for that, do me a favor and click that subscribe button and support what we're doing here. Until then, 